Being a good technician, knowing how to set up exercise stations and instruct exercises is important, but it's not the complete answer when it comes to developing lasting clients. If you as a trainer do not connect with your client, you become replaceable. You want the client to think, wow, I really need this trainer to exercise this well. And one of the techniques I've used over the last 40 years as a trainer is manual resistance. I'm Bill Simone, personal trainer, proprietor of Optimal Exercise Studio, and the author of several books on making exercise easier on your joints. I'm assisted in this video by 2023 intern from Rutgers, Janae Cave. By high-intensity trainers, I'm referring to trainers who are influenced by the old Nautilus, Arthur Jones, Mike Mentzer, Ellington Darden material. Whether or not you stick strictly within those guidelines each and every workout. I certainly don't, but I acknowledge their influence. Here's what you'll see in this video. Dan Riley's Maximal Muscular Fitness book from 1982, Riley's Advantages and Disadvantages of Manual Resistance, Riley's Responsibilities of the Lifter and the Spotter, Preferred Manual Resistance Exercises, Caveats to the Trainer, Format of a Manual Resistance Set, How to Incorporate Manual Resistance, the demonstration of manual resistance practice and references and resources. I was introduced to manual resistance around 1980 when a trainer in a local Nautilus fitness center, Dean Bonanno, saw how I was trying to work out, watered down Mentor style, and sprung it on me. If I remember correctly, he had worked with Dan Riley previously at college. Riley, who went on to become head strength coach for Washington and other pro football teams, published this book in 1982, and while it's currently out of print, it still seems to be one of the few books to really explore this approach. I became a trainer in 1983, and even though the places I worked, the Sports Training Institute locations, had both Nautilus prototypes and current lines, if a station was busy, I'd switch to manual resistance so the client would think I hadn't lost control of the workout. Now after 40 years, I like to think I've refined the protocol, incorporating joint friendly joint ranges and making it useful beyond the original football player subjects. This is a particularly good passage. Riley's words. If the resistance is being applied correctly, the resistance should feel constant to the lifter. The lifter is adding exactly as much resistance as the spotter can raise at each point during the raising phase. If too much resistance is applied at any point, the lifter will be unable to move momentarily. He will be forced to stop the exercise, jerk, or use cheating movements to continue the exercise. If not enough resistance is applied, the exercise will be less productive than it could be. The spotter should also be aware that the lifter is gradually fatiguing with each succeeding repetition. If the resistance is properly applied, the amount of resistance will decrease with each rep. If the spotter applies the resistance correctly, he or she may only have to apply a few pounds of resistance on the last rep or two. On some exercises, the lifter may be unable to even raise the weight of his arms. The point is, it's the spotter's job to apply just the right amount of resistance at each point during the raising phase. Riley identified pros and cons in using manual resistance. Most relevant to personal trainers, the lifter or the client has to learn how to exert and resist with a steady effort. The spotter or the trainer has to learn how to apply the resistance. Responsibilities of the lifter include communicating with the spotter, keeping tension on the muscles, pause when in a contracted position, 
and allow only four seconds for the negative. Responsibilities of the spotter include communicating, not applying maximum resistance the first few reps, having a smooth transition, add resistance to lowering, not applying maximum resistance the first few workouts, and applying less resistance as the lifter approaches the stretch position. From Bill's experience, these are the exercises that were the best with manual resistance. Some of Riley's use the spotter's body weight as resistance, which isn't the same as using manuals as an adjustable or accommodating resistance. Others of Riley's put the lifter and the spotter in awkward positions. At the end of this video are demonstrations of how to practice most of these exercises. Now here are five caveats I have for trainers using manual resistance. Let me elaborate on the last one. If you do 10 RM or a set to failure of 10 complete reps and you stall on the 11th, that's generally enough intensity to maintain and maybe gain strength. But at the end of that set, you've only fatigued with that weight. You aren't left with zero strength. You're left with that weight minus a pound, say. With manual resistance, you can extend the set until the client literally can't raise the weight of their limbs. If they're so motivated, great, but keep in mind that's a lot more uncomfortable than they're used to. And the point of manual resistance is to help you connect with the client, not scare them away. Here's how I suggest coaching the set. The first four reps, this is practice. You just want you and the client to get in sync with the effort and the range. So you as the trainer say things like, move from here to here, I'll be the resistance, or steady effort, I'll just slow you down on the positive. Now don't frustrate the client by stopping them. It's not a wrestling match. It's not competitive, it's collaborative. Now the first four reps, you are practicing the positive, next four reps you're practicing the negative. So now they may be starting to fatigue and they may try to collapse on the negative to gather themselves for the next positive, which you're going to try to discourage. You're going to say things like resist, don't collapse. Okay. They may be strong enough to try to stop you. Again, remind them, don't try to stop. You keep lowering, just resist. And if things go well, by the eighth rep, you get the perfect rep. The client exerts a steady, slow effort on the positive through the range you are controlling. You make them work, but not strain to do the positive. And then the client lowers under control as you're barely overpowering them on the negative. Now with the whole process of finding that perfect rep, you've already made your impression on the client. For the client so motivated, you can have them go beyond that one perfect rep and do more reps where you barely let them finish the positive and barely overpower them on the negative. This takes them beyond that last conventional rep, almost like an expert application of forced reps or a breakdown set, just without risking the client losing control of the weight. You as the trainer, however, have to be on your game and in control of the process. So be sure to practice with another trainer before you use this with clients. I set of the clamshell. Now you're going to straighten this leg out this way. Okay. And hand here and here. Okay, same thing, 10 times. Push up, push up, push up, push up, higher, higher, and now resist. Good one, push up. Okay. You're not gonna not, you're not gonna like me in about three days. Okay, push up. That's it. So you, now your shin is vertical. And now go, you're gonna resist on the way down. And just short. Okay, right about there. Push up. Pull, 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 pull. I'm always gonna let you finish the rep. It's not gonna be pleasant, but pull, 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 pull. Okay, no grimacing. No grimace, no grimacing allowed. <clears throat> so you're going to match 
watch me. Stay right there. That's good. Yep. Pull back harder. Okay, so you're going to just barely let me finish. And I'll pull back. That's it. Good luck. See? No guns. You have to let me finish, <laughs> and I'll get you to lean in. So I would lock uh, lock your elbows, and then let me push against your legs. Right, that's it. Push back. Okay, and then just. with your abdomen stay, stay up there don't budge that's it push back again no no push back again don't let me push you down straight elbows don't let me push you down don't let me that's it oh. come back up okay now lock it in with your abdomen and don't move that's it that's it good two three more this way push back push push back push back push back you feel the abdomen push back push push up push up push up push up push up you can incorporate manual resistance in place of a station as a standalone set. For example, if your facility doesn't have a particular station, you as the trainer can still incorporate that movement into your client's workouts. You can also incorporate manual resistance as the second half of a set, like immediately following the station or free weight version. For example, if the client feels motivated to push a bit harder than usual on a set, or if you as the trainer are smaller, weaker than the client, you pre-exhaust the client with a conventional set and then immediately add a few reps of manual resistance. However you use it, you will definitely get the client's attention. References and resources. Maximum Muscular Fitness by Dan Riley. It's out of print, but you can check used booksellers. We also have Joint Friendly Fitness for the exercise ranges to load and joint positions to avoid. The link can be found in the description. To learn directly with Bill at his studio in central New Jersey or at your facility, you can contact optimalexercise at comcast.net. Or if you're interested in the internship, you can contact the same email listed below.